This is the last journal, unit 10, uh, at the end of the term. So just trying to answer the questions listed in the assignment. What goals did I set for myself at the beginning of the semester and did I meet these? Yes, I had three goals. First and foremost, uh, my goal was to memorize drug-drug interactions, indications, side effects, <coughs> black box warning of the most commonly prescribed antidepressants, antipsychotics, and mood stabilizers. The reason being I was working inpatient and I had to have all of this, this, this information um, pretty well worked up in my memory so that I could be on top of the game when it came to assessment and evaluation and then treatment. My goal was also to become very good at the mental status exam, especially in inpatient setting where uh, patients can be pretty acutely ill in terms of psychosis, mania, or, or just in general mentally ill. Um, also, my goal was to make through the assessment of make a thorough assessment of patients reporting suicidal ideations. I've often found that in outpatient settings, suicidal ideations, um, the provider would generally refer them to inpatient. But here, while I'm inpatient, I had to determine uh, the consequences of these ideations. What are the safety measures I need to take? And if the patient is improving, and what would be the most likely disposition. Um, every time I go in every day to evaluate the patient, I had to be on top of the game in terms of post-assessment, what would be my decision on the disposition of this patient? So yes, I was getting better and better at it. Um, therefore, I was able to meet all the goals. What feelings and prejudices, biases did I experience? Since the patient population was that of acutely ill psychiatric patients, I had an array of emotions during the clinical rotations. Some of them were fear for my safety. Um, of course, there was some sadness at their situation. Um, desire to help them overcome their challenges was predominant. Um, also, in the midst of all these emotions, I also felt a sense of competitiveness because I was the only nurse practitioner in a team of residents. So there was always a challenge <laughs> as to how well I can fare in that company. Um, also, because of this situation, um, I would always find them, well, the residents favored uh, when, it come to, when it came to interviewing challenging patients. Those patients were predominantly assigned to them and not so much to me. So I actually had to bring it up with some of uh, some of these situations. I had to bring it up with the attending, and I told them that unless I'm given the opportunity, I will not be able to get better at it. So luckily, my preceptor was understanding and helpful, and um, yeah, I did get some opportunities to in to interview some very difficult patients, and that was a very exciting part of my day. How did I manage my anxiety, self-doubt, or uncertainty? Well, anxiety and self-doubt were a constant were a constant companion with me throughout this particular clinical rotation because I always found myself um, competing with the residents. So I would wake up early in the morning, look at the through, through the charts of the patients for that day and come prepared. I would look through their history. I would see, look at the nursing notes. I would look at the nurse notes made by social workers. What was the crisis or the ED intake evaluation on these patients? So that would help me come prepared with a short list of probable diagnoses that this patient could present with. And if any of those diagnoses were applicable, then what would be the medications or treatment plan for these patients? So that way, when I would come in, I would evaluate or assess the patient, then I would have a pretty good idea already as to what I'm looking at and, uh, and, and what would be the diagnosis and treatment plan. So coming to work prepared uh, helped me overcome my anxiety and self-doubt. 
What understanding or insights did I gain through this experience? Um, this is my first time inpatient, so it really helped me answer all the questions that I had during uh, my outpatient clinical rotations as to, you know, what goes on in the inpatient setting? So that was my number one question. This helped me understand because I was on so many different units every day and I got to see so many different kinds of patients, um, right from psychiatric illnesses, severely mentally ill, to substance abuse patients. So that was a very thorough and a comprehensive experience that I had this clinical rotation. It helped me answer many of those questions. Some of the other questions were, why were these patients, during my outpatient, I had always had this question as to why was this patient placed on this medication when you know there was a safer alternative present, or why was this patient placed on this combination of medications when only one of them could have been, could have sufficed? Those questions were answered during my inpatient experience because I saw the reason why um, such quick tapering of medications is necessary so much um, or trying different medications was necessary for improvement to bring st to stabilize the patient and to improve patient condition. Um, also, the inpatient psychiatric experience gave me exposure to substance abuse treatment, uh, naltrexone, suboxone, CWAR tri triggered protocols. I was doing all of these, so which was not possible in outpatient settings. So that was another interesting experience that I had. And a good understanding for these treatments was developed. Has reflective practice impacted you as a person? If so, how? Well, as a student, as a provider, reflecting on my interviewing skills was, was, was an important everyday practice. I would, um, after every interview, at the end of the day, I would ask for feedback from my preceptor. But I would also do some self-evaluation by journaling. So the questions I would specifically ask was, did I make, um, how did I make my segue into the, into the assessment? Now these are severely ill patients, so we really have to kind of dance around the topic a little bit before we make, so that we can make them comfortable we can make them trust us, and then we kind of go into the more sensitive part of this interviewing um, about asking questions specifically about their illness, what brought them here, and so on and so forth. Were my questions clear and concise, more importantly? Again, because of the mental state of these patients, my, I had to make sure the framing of my questions was very clear and concise so as not to confuse the patient and elicit the appropriate response. Was my interview comprehensive? Did, was I managed, did I manage to get all the information necessary for a proper uh, diagnosis and assessment? Did I miss anything today? Uh, did I think of getting collateral? Did I ask social worker the questions? Did I ask their nurses the enough questions? So, so on and so forth. Uh, it was a reflective practice on a day-to-day -day basis which helped me get better and better at interviewing. Will I continue to use reflection in my future practice? Yes, of course. Um, I'm, I highly value the importance of self-reflection um, with the intent, and, and that's a very conscious self-reflection, with the intent to make steady and measured improvements. Uh, that kind of reflection is very important to me. And I feel journaling is a very, very good way asking your co-workers, asking your collaborating physician, or even registering the feedback that my patients would give me, um, I would definitely make a note of those to improve my shortcomings. Thank you.